her ability for next year's um, career fair. And we're going to bring in um, the ACT work keys and, uh, and, and, and hopefully pre-certify some of these students so they can enter right into the workforce. Um, we also have um, a couple of businesses that weren't able to come, but they're willing to come and meet with our students like uh, Custom Woods. Uh, their HR, they're, they're in the middle of a transfer um, of, of HR directors there, and they're going to come and meet with two kids that we've identified that are interested in, in working there. Um, so we have we have our community businesses willing to 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 go out of the way to to find employers that that are um, that are excited and ready to work. Uh, I we could not have done this without Barb Clark. So Barb Clark is a retired teacher. She's also uh, my office professional. She has tire tirelessly called kids, midterm grads, encouraged constantly for the last month identifying kids um, and making sure that they're ready for this. I don't think that they were ready for the opportunity. And once they, they had the opportunity in front of them, they were, they were extremely grateful and hopefully word of mouth will get down to the juniors that, uh, that this will be um, uh, focused on. But Barb Clark could not have done it without her um, over identify, you know, trying to identify the kids and, and the encouragement that she brought. And then also Katie Ball, um, and, and the individuals that we talked about uh, that I mentioned earlier uh, within our community. So um, it it's really is a, 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 a baby step in the right direction uh, to identifying kids that I think we've overlooked. I'd, I'd add that I spoke to a couple of the businesses as they were leaving, and they were enthusiastic about the, the students that they had a chance to meet and the, the real potential there for getting high-quality employees. So. It was, it was really good. We would have liked to have more than 45, but I think we had the right 45 for the first year. We're going to work with other area high schools, too, um, and bring other area high schools in as we've increased our employers. I think we had the right ratio. I think we had about 45 kids, a uh, little over 20 businesses, and we hope to increase our businesses, increase the, the student participation. And we were part of the mix for businesses, too, because Matt Davis's name is on that list. <laughs> yeah. Any uh, thank, questions thanks. from the board? I just want to applaud your efforts for that because mm -hmm. I feel like, um, you know, workforce development is something that we overlook. And I appreciate that, you know, Kansans, the, um, the Kansan Camp Vision is now looking at post-secondary um, education rates, but this is even a step before that, and I and I like that we're going in that direction. Here locally, as a former HR director of one of these businesses here, we do have workforce issues or trouble filling those. So that's amazing that we can just bring the, those to the students right here. I told the lady at Caterpillar I had to leave her table because I would have probably got an application if I would have stayed there a couple more minutes. Um, you start looking at how much they start with. Chose the wrong line of work. Thank you. Well, I can tell you I appreciate all the work you guys are doing. I've been hearing for years about the needs in the workforce in all levels, whether it's manufacturing, software programming, just, you know, powder coating, welding, you just name it. People out there have been saying they, we need it. This is, we're going a great direction, I think. So really appreciate it. One more thing for me, unless there's questions, would be we did have State Board of Education member Dina Horst visited mm -hmm. Frank Bergman today, uh, the Kansas Reading Roadmap program and had an opportunity to learn more about the program, see, see some of our student groups in action, learn more about the, uh, how, how we're, it ties together what we do in the day with MTSS, with after school activities, with parent involvement, with summer programming, all to help our students succeed at higher levels. So she seemed impressed with it, wants legislators to hear more about KRR and how it's it's a program that can be effective. It is making a difference, not just in terms of we feel good about it, but that we see the test scores going up. Mm -hmm. That those aren't everything, but they it, it is important, especially at the earlier grades, for us to know that the kids are getting the skills that they need, especially with the reading area. So uh, that that was a good visit. I think she she left with a good feeling about the program and what's going on at that school and in our district. Any questions for me? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.
Okay, we know Stephen did an EA next, but we all know that. Yeah. Okay, so we have the legislative update. Lou, it's in your electronic black notebook. Basically, it's the last email you got. This, this is going to be a summary, of course, of the bill that was passed by the House on Saturday, last Saturday, and then approved by the Senate uh, Monday afternoon of this week. Luckily, it didn't jump way over earlier this afternoon. I plugged it in, it jumped halfway off. <laughs> Okay, this is, this is House Substitute for Senate Bill 61. Uh, Governor Collier has indicated he will sign the bill. I'm not sure when that's scheduled for. If it has been scheduled, I haven't heard. And uh, then it will go into the Supreme Court proceedings. They did change the schedule. Um, some <laughs> oral argument or the uh, briefs are due on May 7th, and any rebuttals of the briefs are due on the 14th of May. Oral arguments are still scheduled for the 22nd with a decision to be rendered on or before June 30th. So the final timeline is still in place, but they did give the Attorney General's office a little bit more time, um, which was probably warranted as we talked about last time with, with the way things have unfolded. They, the main thing that changed was some of what we talked about last time where they were trying to take some of the LOB money and stack it onto the base and, and, and kind of artificially inflate the base. They've done away with that, so now the base would go from 4006 as it presently is to $4,165 for next year, and then it goes up incrementally by $137 a year for the remaining four years of the five-year plan and would top out at $4,713, what I've got underlined there in 2022-23. After that point, then, it's also written into it that it would continue to increase are by a factor of the consumer price index. So that's built into the formula has never been there before. So that's a good part of, of the bill. Other things remain pretty much the same. Uh, I did want to point out that special ed funding is going to increase significantly next year, 44.4 million, and then seven and a half million each year thereafter throughout the five years of the plan. So it moves us closer to that 92%, doesn't quite get there, but it's still a definite step in the right direction. Um, early childhood funding is gonna be increased. They added eligibility for three-year-olds and, and, and as well as four-year-old at risk and are increasing the funding for that. So that's another positive. The one thing that I did wanna point out it does call for every district to at least levy a 15% minimum on the LLB. Every district does in the state presently, but it makes that mandatory, if you will. I think the court may find some issue with that, but that remains to be seen. Um, it does, at uh, the, the top of the second page here, it does increase uh, the LLB base the artificial base that's used for the LOB calculation is 4490 until a base catches up with it. Well, starting in 1920, that artificial base will be affected by the consumer price index factor as well. So that, again, is a positive. The one thing that kind of didn't change than we were hoping for, and I know even Representative Carlin at one point tried to introduce uh, an amendment to get it removed, but the bond cap still is in place. And uh, in, in the same format that it was as we talked at our last meeting. Uh, and again, you know, a speculative, but that, that still could be a subject of, of review or, or possible contention with the court if they see an equity issue rolled into the way that cap is designed. And I, I think there's potential for that, but that remains to be seen. That was an estimated max of 400 million then for next year, is that correct? That was the number that we talked about last time, yes. Okay. 
that the, the amount that expired is around 350 and, and the the producer's price index might add another 50 million. So roughly ballparkish, that was what Mr. Varnberg said. It might be in the, the neighborhood of about 400 million. <coughs> Okay, all told then over the five years as it breaks down here, it's $643,885,000 in new money added in. If you add that in or on top of the 190 to 200 million that came in in Senate Bill 19 a year ago, that's where you're up in the 800, 850 million range, somewhere in that neighborhood. That's kind of been one of the figures talked about is what was needed for uh, to meet the adequacy part of the um, debate for several years so remains to be seen stay tuned as it continues to unfold but it looks like at least from our our point of view this is probably the minimum of what we would have if something changes from this point going forward it would probably only go up uh, so we Mr. Reed and I have discussed it and so on and we feel we can begin looking at some planning based on the figures uh, that are included this is just the column explanation for the spreadsheet, the two columns that we're going to focus on real quick, well, column two, which is just the weighted enrollment, and then seven and eight as we roll into the spreadsheet here. And I highlighted a couple of kind of our comparison districts, if you will, just so we can get an idea of what some of them are getting. Lawrence, of course, they've got about 10,800 students. They're getting 3.4 million in additional monies. And this money includes, as we talked about last time, both general fund increase and special Ed dollar increase. Dodge City, which is almost very comparable to us in headcount, 1.8 million. Gary County, only 594,000. And that, if you look at it, uh, that is primarily due to, if you look at column six, uh, negative 190,000, that's due to enrollment decline. Right. That's, that's where their, their factor is. Um, Manhattan Ogden, two two million nine hundred and forty three thousand and change. Well, the biggest thing there, the two million two hundred twenty five in column six, is due to the enrollment increase that we get. That was this year that rolls into the formula for next year. So a big part of it for us is, and then why that number is such a big number compared to Geary County, uh, is because of that enrollment increase that rolls into the formula. So being a growth district definitely helps us. As the way the formula is, as I understand it, is still set, it's still going to be the prior year's number that is going to drive your base FTE. So it's this year's FTE that will drive the base part of the formula. The other parts of the formula you're at risk and some others will be on your current year. So it's still a mix, but um, that's that part of it that was put in place in Senate Bill 19 last year remains in place. Salina, which is about, what, 800 students larger than us. 2.3 million, uh, Derby 2.5, Mays very comparable to us 2.5. So the point of that, and here's Auburn, Washburn, which is definitely one of our comparison districts, 1.8. The point of, of sharing some of those other numbers, the comparisons, we are the largest of those by far, and the biggest piece of that is that enrollment increase. It's not a, so it's not all coming just from the change in the formula and from the from the additional money, that that's a part of it, of course. But ours also our enrollment number is a big part of of what we're we're receiving next year. Okay, I believe that's all I have at this point. Uh, they're still working on conference committee to finalize, you know, the budget bills and how much they're going to do with capers and some other pieces and so on. Um, reinstating some money for higher ed and, of course, the uh, consensus revenue. Estimates were very favorable, and even then the April revenues were 66 million above the recently revised consensus revenue estimates from a couple weeks ago. So the budget flow or the, the seems to be very positive, which is something they haven't dealt with for a long time, and, and so that's good news coming out of Topeka that we haven't seen in, in the recent past. That's all I have unless there's questions. Morning. Audience? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Okay, on to the Board of Education. We will start over with Katrina. <clears throat> All right. Uh, last week, I had the opportunity to go with Eric to take Representative Carlin around Amanda Arnold. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that it was eye opening for her. We took her to my daughter's fifth grade classroom uh, <laughs> where you have, you can barely, we could barely shimmy behind everybody just to get to the other side of the classroom. So, um, I think, it, I think that that went really well. Uh, it also provided Eric and I the opportunity to talk to her about the bond cap. And so I was very appreciative of her efforts to, um, try to, to bring that up, even though it wasn't uh, successful. I think the more we can get that information out there, the better. And kudos to, to Eric, because I think that you did a lot of explaining on that one to make sure she understood what the problems were that we were up against. And that's all I have tonight. Kurt? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, since I know Dave won't say anything, but and I know he's dying too, but I uh, just want to thank Lily again for uh, you've served with distinction over there at the high school and great student leader and you're an exact role model of every girl should aspire to be and maybe you should maybe you'll be maybe you can replace your dad on the board <laughs> here if we get some we need some youth on the board um, <laughs> present company included but uh, you, you handled the uh, the mascot issue very well and uh, so I'm just very proud to know you and I kind of watched you as a as a freshman all through the uh, forensics and debate and so good luck to you and stay in touch with us Facilities and Growth met last week with local law enforcement and emergency responders. Um, we had a very frank discussion about uh, building safety and strategies to try to um, think about as we work towards our bond issue and um, things like metal detectors and more school resource officers and um, it was a good, frank discussion. Um, I think I certainly appreciated the perspective that, that those folks brought. I hope we sort of made some impressions upon them. And uh, to be talked about in the future as well, but um, you know, one of the things that uh, was discussed was, uh, you know, metal detectors at at the entrances and there are schools that do that. And so I've been doing some digging and reading about are they effective? And um, Los Angeles has been having a discussion in the wake of the Parkland shootings about, about that. And one of the things that was pointed out that made me feel a little silly that I hadn't really thought about before is as horrific as Parkland was and as many students as we've lost to gun violence, we lose far more students to auto, automobile crashes and to suicide. And so um, we need the, you know, automobile crashes are tough for school districts. We can't follow the kids around and monitor their, their car habits. But clearly we have students, we've had students in this district who um, took their own lives. And that's a place where we can help. And um, so, as you know, part of what I want to continue to think about as a board member, and I think we all need to think about is, um, again, I'll say social workers, psychologists, mm -hmm. and that becomes a two-pronged um, uh, approach. They can help with those kids that might be thinking about doing violence to other kids, but they can also help with kids that are thinking about doing violence to themselves. Uh, so, as an all, not that I'm... 100% against <clears throat> metal detectors. I'll, I'll continue to push for softer, softer ways of hardening our schools. I'll put it that way um, to keep our schools welcoming and but address some of the real issues that, that we're facing. So um, again, more to come on on that. Um, I don't think I've got a lot else other than I'm really looking forward to graduation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I actually have some notes I was scribbling today in between conference committee meetings because there's a lot of downtime, you know, it's like <laughs> intense discussion for 15 minutes and then two hours of waiting. And so I have been giving some thought over the past couple of weeks to some of what we have talked about here over the last month or so about the bond issue. And so I just thought I would trot some things out because it's board comments and we haven't had a work session. So 
I'm just going to let people know what my thoughts are right now. And maybe those will help things move forward. I don't know. Um, so I've been thinking about our previous discussions about whether we stagger the bond issue, what, you know, how, how we might, how we might do it. And, uh, I, I appreciated that conversation that we had two or three weeks ago, but I've kind of come back around and my, my gut at this time is to just go for the whole thing. I think we need to seize this opportunity as a great investment in the future, not only of our school district, but in the economic health and well-being of our community that's growing. And so my position right now, and I think I will, I'm, I'm really firming up on this and, uh, and uh, I don't see myself changing unless we get some significant data otherwise from our survey, uh, is that at, at this point, my strong inclination is to go ahead and go for the whole, the whole larger issue. I think we should just go ahead and take care of as many needs as we can at this time with prudent planning. So I just wanted to let people know where I am on that. I think, um, you know, I think our elementary needs, I wanted to thank Eric for his um, presentation at intergovernmental lunch last week. And I was glad that Michelle was able to come with him. And uh, he gave a good presentation to the community leaders. And uh, I think that helped explain a lot of things to several people there who, you know, their jobs don't entail them paying attention to this every day. And there were a lot of people who didn't realize how full we were at the elementaries. And so that really, that light bulb really came on for a lot of people. I think you probably noticed that too, Katrina. People were talking to us afterwards. Well, I just had no idea about your enrollment growth. And, and, and also they were really interested to see how we're relatively stable at the high school level. And that helped clarify some things for them. So I, I appreciated that. So thank you for that, Eric. And I thought that was a really good meeting and, and moved us um, down the road with some larger community leaders who I think will need, obviously, to help us support the bond issue. So, um, so I was really happy about that. I think for pre-K, that's obviously going to be um, a little bit harder sell because, you know, traditionally we don't think of pre-K as, as in the purview of K-12. through But... We have supported that over the years, this board and, and previous boards. And I think we have a lot of data and research that can, you know, show our patrons that if we invest in pre-K and bring them under our umbrella, it saves us money down the road. It prepares our students better. And, and ultimately, it's a win for the school district. And so I think with some, with some education, I think that will also be something that uh, we can make happen. And I really think I, I literally in the ladies' room on the way out of the intergovernmental meeting and <laughs> heard two ladies and I was not able to track them down because they got it they got away. But they were they were literally talking about how yeah they saw me they were like, oh run away. Um, they were talking about how they didn't know until recently that, you know, we, we all pay federal taxes and a lot, you know, some of that goes to pre K programs and we, you know, if we spend some money locally to draw that money down, you know, it's it's just drawing down money that we're already paying. And so I don't know who they were, but they weren't, they weren't at intergovernmental. So I don't know what, how that, you know, how those stars aligned, but um, you know, they were saying, wow, I, I didn't know that about pre-K and I was, you know, they were really interested in that. They were sort of grandmother age or great grandmother age. So that was sort of a moment for me. I was like, well, you know, I, this is an angle that we need to pursue and I think would help us sell the preschool issue. And so one, another thing I thought I wanted to talk about is my position on the ninth grade center, my support for the overall bond issue, you know, for the full amount is obviously predicated on moving the ninth graders up to the main campus. And I would like us to put to bed any more discussion of moving any more children to that building after the construction is done. Now, again, this is just me. I don't want to talk about putting sixth graders there. I don't want to talk about putting eighth graders there. If we don't think ninth graders belong there, why would sixth graders or eighth graders? So I, I appreciate the input that I've received on that. But me personally, you know, let's move them and then let's put administration down there. Let's do some community partnerships down there. And I think if we if we talk about that in our planning, and I'm, you know, I'm not saying we have to assign every single room at the ninth grade center, but if we make that clear in our planning, I think 
ultimately the community will support that. And I think something that will help the community support the larger bond issue, moving the ninth graders is, you know, we do hear a lot of input about we need a second high school, we don't need to move the ninth graders, we need a second high school. You know, it's it's already too big or too small or or whatever. So I think if we were to publicly say, you know, based on the data that we have, based on the studies that we've we've received, you know, when our population, high school age, or when our overall population, whatever, when it gets to X number, that is when we will start talking about a high school. You know, not until then, talking about a second high school. So, you know, when, when our population gets to X, that's that triggers the discussion. Mm -hmm. And maybe we even authorize staff, you know, start start looking. You know, I mean, it could be 10, 15, however many years, but it doesn't hurt to just keep an eye out for land if and when that trigger point is reached. And maybe that will help some of the folks in, in the community who at this point still seem to be really clinging to that second high school idea in spite of the fact that our population just does not dictate the need for a second high school. You know, if we were to build a second high school on the eastern edge of the district or something, you know, our school that we just spent several million dollars renovating would be half empty, you know, so so that's those are my thoughts on that and then my only other thing is it occurred to me that uh you know it's the last few weeks last couple of weeks three weeks whatever of the school year we have a lot of community uh events at the schools you know picnics field days you know music programs this is a great time i think for our for our principals and our teachers and our administrators you know to be at answering questions from teachers and, I mean, excuse me, from parents and grandparents and other community members about the bond issue. So are there, are there just some quick sort of talking points? I'm sorry to sort of use that language, but I mean, you know, just a, a little, a few points that we can give them, just some facts about why we're doing the bond issue. I mean, you know, I think all of us who are up here at the table, we, we think we know, and I'm sure I know for a fact that Michelle sends out updates mm -hmm. uh, after every school board meeting. But I wonder, you know, I know sometimes those things get lost in, especially at the end of the year when we have so much going on. So is there is there something that we could do for our principals and for maybe, you know, and maybe it's the principals and just some of the, the leadership, you know, have a, have a few talking points if, you know, if they want some board members to come and I don't know, you know, do, I don't know how you meet with your with your folks. I mean, I don't want to have the board intruding on, you know, cabinet meetings or whatever, but I just mean, you know, if there's a time when they when they would like to meet with a couple of board members and Dr. Wade and Eric and Michelle and we could all be like, "Okay, you know, team, <laughs> you know, here's, you know, we may not yet know at this particular moment what that bond issue is going to look like specifically and we haven't gotten the survey data back, but just, you know, here here's why your board is talking about a bond issue. Here are some, here are just some facts because I know there's a lot of information swirling around and I know that we do a great job trying to push stuff out to our folks, but I just wondered if, if a dedicated time with a couple of people, would that be another way to just help us get our message out? So that's it. I'm sorry I took up so much time, but I've had some windshield time so and reflection time. So thank you. I'll go ahead and respond yeah. to that with what I know right now. First of all, it'd be pretty simple to put some talking points mm -hmm. together. But your upper administration, as far as principals or um, district leadership teams, have been briefed on uh -huh. where we are in the process. I thought they probably yeah. were, but I didn't, you know. Pretty much every meeting we've had yeah. so far that this, this is where we are. Good. Um, so we've been keeping okay. that up. Okay, I didn't know how much through. detail you had gone into with them. We've kind of gone into point. the preferred method of each. This, this uh -huh. is kind of where we've landed on the preferred method, and now it's about hashing it together. Okay. So okay. I, I, Dr. Wade can probably speak to that as well, but I, I, I think there is a okay. good understanding from that group. Okay, thank uh, you. Maybe not exactly where we're going to end up. Right. But I think they know what's been out there, what's the... Uh, Leading things okay. in person. I didn't know how much detail you'd gone into yet because we've been so amorphous. So 
I'm very clear about the primary um, early learning mm-hmm. going to two sites uh-huh. and, and where those two sites are, elementary um, with with an east school and uh-huh. sixth grade transition to the middle school and the, and the high school on one campus. So all, all those things where as we had those individual discussions, the ones that came out on top. Mm-hmm. Now, we probably went over the other options of it as well and always ask for ideas. We we get them from that group too. But I, I think they're well aware Good. of where the board Good. land in on all those things. Now, all the little smaller things on it. Not, yeah, yeah. I think they know what's appropriate on their buildings. They're paying really right. close attention to their buildings. Thank you. Um, I won't reiterate what you said, but mm-hmm. I appreciate what you said. And I'm, I'm mm. sitting pretty comfortably in alignment with that. Um, in uh, same thing in the sense of having some time to think about it in the week since we've had a work session and time to reflect on where we are. And, um, I, I just think it's time to be brave. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it's, it feels risky and scary to ask for such a big ask but there's not any one project on there that I feel like I could look that area in the face Mm -hmm. and say, we chose not to do something, not to try. And um, because I think they're all necessary. I I don't see much of what we're talking about as being for, for fun or, or for, Mm -hmm. um, for extras. I, I see them as being fundamental issues, fundamental service issues to providing educational services to kids in our community. And um, so, so I see it as, as it's maybe time for us to, to be brave. So I'll leave that. Um, last week, last Monday morning, I had the opportunity to go visit with the Lions Club meeting at 7.30 in the morning. No, 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 no. 6.30. Six, yeah, I had to block that out. It was at 6.30. <laughs> I had to wake somebody up, wake the teenager up, leave, come back. It was a little risky there. Um, but it was a great meeting. It was a good, productive conversation. I had some good feedback and good questions. I was super appreciative of the fact that when um, a gentleman at the meeting asked me a question about when do, these, when do the bonds retire from the last bond issue, I could – honestly look at him and say, I have no clue, (laughs) but I will email Lou Faust this morning Mm -hmm. and I will get you that answer. And I emailed Lou and he had an answer to me within 30 minutes. So I was able to pass that information back to that group. And um, so I guess to the public that, that might be listening or might tune in at some later point, I would reiterate kind of what Leah was just saying that we're available to speak to whatever groups you guys might be a part of in the community that have questions. Um, we aren't going to always have the answer, but we're certainly willing to come and, and have the conversation with you and, and help pass on that information and, and receive information and feedback back from you. Um, tomorrow I will be judging. I don't, I will, it'll, I'll be judging. I'm, <laughs> I was asked to be a judge, so I'll be judging um, from Morgan Job's um, language arts class. They're doing the, visual literature projects that are going to be presented and available for um, at the beach museum tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to do that. Um, Those kids asked some good questions and I'm excited to see what all of their projects are. I think the mercury covered some, some of that last week. You kind of gave a preview to that. I believe Um, girls on the run 5k is on Saturday. (laughs) The season is almost over and it's an exciting time. And then the last thing I would just put out there, um, if anybody's interested in riding along with me, I'm going to take the day off on May 22nd and go watch the Supreme Court at work when they review or have the um, oral arguments on the school funding. Just thought, well, I've never seen them argue or seen arguments in front of them and that seemed like a good day to go. So if anybody is interested in going, I'm happy to have company in the car. That's all I have. Interesting. Okay. Well, a couple different reflections. One, uh, Dave, your comment about uh, suicides and the other issues. I read an article in the Kansas City Star, I believe it was, this week about 
basically an epi epi uh, epidemic of what they're having in Kansas City of suicides. Uh, in fact, their last one they had, they didn't even have a, uh, a joint session of, of the students to talk about it or anything because it was becoming too common. So, yes, I think we do need some extra counselors and stuff in our schools. Uh, being in healthcare for 10 and a half years, I can tell you we have dropped it big time in a lot of areas. So, uh, and I appreciate your comments on the school. I'm anxiously awaiting where our surveys that uh, we have sent out uh, to a lot of the other areas. Um, I did get an email about our strategic planning. Can either one of you, they want a four hour session or something with the board? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I think several four hour <laughs> sessions with the board. We have two volunteers. <laughs> I think they want to hear from, I know they want to hear from the board. Uh, so, and they, you know, I know one of them, I mean, the comment here was, uh, I need to get three to four dates planned for the school board to do the strategic so, plan. Mm -hmm. Each session should be around four hours. I would like for the last session to be before June the 10th. <clears throat> <He's good>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, look at your calendars, I guess. I don't see anything uh, either the 20th. I don't see anything next Wednesday. Uh, I, I would like to try and keep them on Wednesday, but they don't have to be. Kurt? Say you wanted, they want three sessions or one? They wanted three dates. I don't know how many three sessions, four. three or four dates. One four hour session, or well, it wasn't session. real clear on his email on how many actual sessions. He, wants three to four. I, he actually wants three to four sessions with us. That's the impression I got was three to four sessions of four hours each. Is that wow? We didn't <clears throat> we didn't talk to him directly, but we got the email as well. Now. I think we need to clarify that. Well, I, <laughs> I, mean, I'm, I'm, I, mean, I think we need whatever it takes to get it done. Yeah. I'm willing to do it, but to squeeze that in is if we all anyway. Okay. Well, I was just kind of wondering what our schedules would like for next Wednesday, if at all possible. Get one of them out of the way. Like in the evening? Uh, during our regular, yeah. Try it at 6 o'clock if they're going to be four hours or close to four hours. Get out of here by 10, 10.30. Is that something, and I think that'll be before we get all the surveys back? Well, weren't they due on? I think one of the surveys. Oh, I know. It's two different topics. I was trying to. Do you want a work session next week? Do we need a work session next week? He's asking four hours for his side. Just yeah, I know. Side, yeah. I don't know if I'll be ready next Wednesday. I, it depends when data comes back. They were supposed to finish up phone calls tonight is uh, mm -hmm. when I believe they were going to finish up that piece and then start working on the data pieces. So, so we might as well. I, I think you can plan on this next Wednesday would be totally fine. This is important. We got to get mm -hmm. the ball rolling on it. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've had the other conversation off a lot. You're, you got a lot more foundational behind us on, on a lot of that. That being said, I'm going to probably need some time <laughs> as well. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that, but I'm going to need the time um, to help get through that too. So, Well, I know we've kind of planned our Wednesdays, <laughs> I think, for the rest of our lives for the next <laughs> couple months. But <laughs> uh, So that's why I was trying to just throw one in next Wednesday. It's good for that particular one and then clarify what he really needs beyond that. That won't throw me off at all, and I, I would plan on for our next regular board meeting on on May um, what sixteen sixteen trying to count my fourteen <laughs> out about doing a work session ahead of the meeting on the sixteenth. Have you guys met with them at all yet for the strategic? No. Have you guys met with them yet at all? I know he's they the they meeting ever will be with the entire board. They they've conducted some interviews with individuals. Is is what I know at this point. I'm not sure who all those individuals are, but I got have one. started. Okay. Well, I'm sure some of the first is going to be questions and 
just general questions anyway. It was fascinating. I think you'll enjoy it. I enjoyed my part of it. I'm anxious to see where this goes. No, I'm thinking. Oh, that's the, right. Never uh, mind. That's right. The night. Oh, you're talking about it early. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's true. Thank you, Michelle. So, will the ninth work for everybody? Okay. And then maybe uh, from you, there could look at other dates. You're right. Well, we got to find out really what he truly needs. Uh, so we're talking. Did you get a hold of him? And yeah. <laughs> she's she's the contact. Okay. <laughs> and. <laughs> I'm saying six o'clock. Well, I don't want to take till eleven, so yeah, okay. that's why I'm thinking six. Okay. May ninth, six to ten. I just texted Jordine. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's enough. Of my comments for the night. That'll be. <laughs> <laughs> out cute other dates. Can we just put ten other tentative dates on? We're going to do some other ones. Uh, well, we could. I mean, or do we recommend that just the couple of us committee members who um, do those other ones? We want to go. Should we email what the purpose of all of those is? Because maybe we, as a board, establish what our priorities are in that first four hour session and then the representatives could for strategic planning can go and do the other ones and meet during the daytime or something like that. Maybe. I mean I think his first one was pretty general, so and I don't know what the other sessions he's looking at and, and purpose of them are. So I think we need to establish that. But I think we need a full session first to do that. Mm -hmm. So you that's why I'm thinking the first one should be just next Wednesday because we aren't going to be quite ready for. Uh, but then we may need to throw in a Tuesday or Thursday at some point mm -hmm. in order to get it, or even Monday. Mm -hmm. I try to stay away from Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. <laughs> at so your family time. Daryl, if you just send out, send in requests for information on who's needed, and then maybe Diane, you can help us out with some some dates so we can get those things scheduled. That'd be very helpful. Okay. Well, this uh, is a busy time of year for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that was the other part of my comments was that okay, I know we have choirs coming up in all the schools, we have band concerts coming up in the schools, we just finished a track meet for the middle schools today. Uh, Principal Hoyt's been sending out stuff constantly on other activities at the high school. So for all the parents and everybody out there, buckle up. <laughs> There's a lot going on right now. Well, that's personal. Yes, we do. Dave. Well, given what Eric has said, and we can't do a work session before our next board meeting, we need to tend to be block off the 23rd of the work session for Eric. <coughs> oh, yeah, I think we definitely got to block yeah. off the 23rd for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> um, would six o'clock be a good time for that one? It's five thirty-six. I mean, it makes me no. Never mind. It's totally fine. Six o'clock. If that if that helps get everybody here on time, that's perfect. I think we we'll just do it at six. Mm -hmm. and that'll be on the twenty-third, and that's a facilities work session. And I'm hoping to have some of those survey results back for the May 16th meeting and I actually have a request on the agenda to present back at least what I have. It, it might not be a full thing, but I, they told me they'd hit me the highlights first and some of the major things we were looking at maybe before we get the full data report. So I, I'll have a spot on the 16th to share what I do have available for us. Awesome. Thank you. Okay.
Um, gang, buckle up. <laughs> we got a lot of work, I think, going in the next month and a half. Uh, okay. Uh, that finishes that. We are on to new business. The Bishop Stadium scoreboard purchase, page 38. Does Matt need to come up for that or Dave? Well, I'm willing to make a motion, but I'd sure like to hear. Oh, sorry. I'm willing to make a motion, but I'd kind of like to hear about you know, and give people some recognition for where mm -hmm. the funding came from for this. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> If it, there, there we if go. It's a real blue light, it's on. If it's green, it's off. Well, thanks for having Matt and I tonight. Um, this is a project we've been talking about for probably a year or so. And uh, we've been working with the parent support group with the football program and also trying to get a, a major donor to help us uh, out with the costs of, of, of the uh, scoreboard. Uh, I knew I was in trouble a year ago when the horn stopped working. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's during game time. That's a that's a big piece of, of football games and end of ball games for soccer and such. So, doing a little research last year, I kind of found out that uh, it, it was installed sometime during the uh, the time of of Dr. Les Depew, I believe, or one of our former athletic directors. So roughly somewhere around the year of 1996. So it's 22 years plus old at this time and, and badly needs to be replaced. Um, this last fall, uh, Mr. Davis and his crew put in LED lights. So we uh, would have all the lights available for the scoreboard and just kind of pieced together things the last couple of years with hopes that we could come up with enough money to uh, put something together and we have. So in talking with the uh, parent support group for the football program, they donated a large bit of this as $10,000. And then uh, talking with uh, uh, Community First National Bank, who works with our uh, kick for cash at half times at our football games. Um, Rob Stitt was willing to uh, step up to the plate and help us out as well. And so that's where the advertisement piece comes on the scoreboard that you see uh, from the example. So uh, we're, we're using very little um, district funds at this time. Uh, we are going to have Thomas signs. Uh, they're going to do the installment. Uh, we have to add an additional uh, steel beam to to it out there to support an additional seven feet to the enlargement of the scoreboard. They're going to install stall that, and then when the piece comes in, then they'll do the uh, removal of the old scoreboard and uh, installment of the new. And then our electrician will come in after that and do the wiring and all that stuff. So uh, there won't be any added, added expense on that. Great. Any questions from the board? Nope. Dave? Make a motion. Okay. I move to get final approval to the bid submitted by Dactronics of Brookings, South Dakota to replace the scoreboard at Bishop Stadium in the amount of $17,860. Second by Leah. Any other comments by the board? Except the fact this thing's old. Go ahead. Sure. Well, I just just so the, the public knows, I'm going to go ahead and vote for this because it's, it's even though my bank gave a, a donation, a large donation for this, but uh, it's not purchasing any services from the bank, so it's just right. a donation. So, so make so I think I'm comfortable go ahead and voting on this. Thank you. Any more comments from the board? From the audience? All those in favor, right hand. Motion passes 6-0. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 8.3, desktop purchases. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ribble? Oh, Kurt. Yep. Awfully fast on looking down the line there. I move to give final approval to computer desktop equipment purchases from Microsupply Incorporated of California in the amount of $28,046. Is 
second by Carla. Any questions or comments by the board? Dave. I'll take this opportunity to say that, uh, again, all these technology purchases are part of a plan, multi-year plan that Dr. Ribble and his staff have been working on for a long time, along with board members and other committee members. So while it may be looking like the board's just given quick approval to some large purchases, we've actually in some ways been looking at these for years. Thank you, Dave. Anything from the audience? All those in favor, right hand. Motion passes, 6-0. Uh, district, whoop, let me see which one am I, 8-4. District technology purchases, uh, page 42, Carla. That's what I was looking for. Page 47. Uh, I move to give final approval for the purchase of iPads from Apple Inc. of Cupertino, California, in the amount of $19,733. Teacher Laptops from Riverside Technology, Inc. of South Sioux City, South Dakota, in the amount of $19,034.84. Student Laptops from Trinity 3 Technology of St. Paul, Minnesota, in the amount of $2,430. And Desktops from Microsupply, Inc. of California, in the amount of $1,516 totaling $42,713.84. Motion by Carla, second by Kurt. Any more comments by the board? By the audience. All those in favor, write in. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you for all your work, Dr. Ribble. Uh, oh, the next one, school start in end times. Eric Reed. It's the annual approval of the starting and end times. These are unchanged from last year. Dave? I move to accept on first. I move to accept on first reading school starting and ending times for the regular school days and for half days as presented, subject to negotiations. Second by Leah. Questions or comments by the board? By the audience? I won't ask any students. All those in favor, right in. Motion passes 6-0. Okay. Uh, student fees and textbook rental. Lou Faust and Lacey, page 50. It's here on this. Lacey took off. Yeah. Probably the pertinent document on that would be on page 52, which is the actual... Uh, worksheet that has the student fees and textbook rentals uh, recommended for next school year. As far as textbook rentals and the student materials, we're recommending no changes in those fees from this year. Um, the only increases would be the ones that are in bold in the other fees section. The recorders would go from $750 to $8. They're costing us about $795 each now, so that's just to reflect cost. Um, the new one that's added this year is the Naviance fee for the middle school. We've had the high school fee for a couple of years, and they added um, Naviance at the middle school this year. It was funded internally and, and um, added with the plan to add this fee going forward for next year. So it'd be five dollars per student at the middle school level. The middle school yearbook would go up a dollar from nine to ten, again to reflect cost, and then the high school yearbook would go up three dollars from 73 to 76, and then there's some incremental, uh, but each level goes up $3 based on the dates, and that's been that kind of a, a practice as far as the dates over the last few years. And then at the bottom, in the preschool enrollment fees, the one at the far right, the Toddler 3, the T3, is a new fee with three-year-olds becoming eligible for the program, uh, so that's a new fee that's being added uh, for $100 a month for those students, and those are these are all most uh, regular fees and, and some, some of the others up at the top, of course, they're broken down based on reduced or, or uh, free lunch status and so on. Be happy to take any questions. Carla? I would move that the board accept on first reading the student and textbook rental fees as presented for the 2018-19 school year. Second by Leah. Questions or comments from the board? Any questions or comments from the audience? All those in favor, right hand. 
Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Stay there, Lou. <laughs> we'll go back to the screens, too. Okay. Uh, our favorite subject, budget planning, 2018-19, page 56. <clears throat> Budget season begins, and we'll end the uh, first meeting in August. So, the process, hopefully, yes, hopefully we're we're there by that point in time. Uh, what we've got with you starting on page fifty six in the packet is a um, the listing of budget addition requests that have been submitted um, by um, various district leadership personnel, principals, and, and directors, and so on throughout the district. And uh, what we wanted to do tonight, is just give you an overview of what was submitted. And then as we, we move forward, we'll begin looking at what are the uh, administrative recommendations uh, from this list and, and and as we hone in closer down the road as to what we're actually looking at and we know for sure what our revenue sources are going to be that will come into the picture down the road uh, any, any projected savings we have in different areas and those kind of things and begin to balance that as to what we think we can do and uh, and what our needs and priorities are going forward I will say, just as a caveat going into this, this is the most extensive lifts that we've ever brought forward. And part of that, I brought on myself at a DAT meeting earlier in the year when we had no idea what was going to happen with the court case and so on. I, I said, submit your needs, submit your wants, and dream a little. If you know, there was something really significant that was to change and happen. Well, I didn't think we'd get as much as what we did because uh, the list totals a little over $7 million in additions. <laughs> and obviously there's, there's no way that we're going to be able to fulfill all that. So making some priority choices is going to become uh, a, um, a challenge uh, going forward, but, but is, is need. Uh, and also I will say going into it, there are a number of areas where in this list there are probably overlapping and duplicate areas that came from different departments that were alluding to maybe similar type things and needs. So some of that uh, will filter out and sift out for you as we move forward going as well. Okay. So, and I'm not going to go through item by item, but just give you kind of group overviews. The first ones in the red are kind of some things that we carry forward from prior years that were things that we just kind of want to make sure that, that we're aware of or, or that we are checking into, uh, for example, the second one there, the internet increases. We, we've got a five-year contract, so I visit with Dr. Ribble, so that, that figure is going to go away, and that one will drop off a list. We don't have to worry about that while we're in the terms of that contract. Uh, E-rate funding, we're still, still doing some research on. Um, the first, I've got them broken into groups. The first group that I've got, group one, is kind of district budget and utilities, kind of almost some things, the have-tos, if you will, that, that we just anticipate, uh, such things as probably eating, adding a teacher or two for uh, additional enrollment needs. Um, the inflation value, we've had that in our list every year and we kind of calculate that based on all expenditures outside of salary and benefits. What would that be and then calculate a 1% increase? Um, just because we need, we need that, that just happens to all of us just like it does at home. We, we need to be cognizant of that. Insurance, health insurance we don't know about, so that's why it's in italics. Um, we've got a figure in there now, but you know, that's one of those that that uh, we don't know what the percentage increase might be at this point in time. And, and Andy keeps working on that. And hopefully we'll know that within the next month to six weeks so that we can plug in a real a real value there. Other things as we work on things that we, we anticipate, um, some of those type of things, utilities, things of that nature as we go along. Uh, that section right now totals a lower million dollars. The second section came from Matt Davis in, in maintenance and facilities. Uh, the first one there, district plumber, was an unfilled position that we filled this year. So that one's not going to be added into the list. It's going to kind of be a factored out. But then there's some other positions in there um, that he would like to see as far as uh, upgrades. A lot of the areas and skilled maintenance and in grounds, uh, grounds around the district. 
uh, from the early learning in group three, a school nurse and a social worker, and that one we're looking at and seeing if that would come from our operational funds or if maybe that would come from early childhood funds. So we're still doing some work on that item. The next section, group four, comes from teaching and learning and involves um, the instructional technology facilitator. That position um, would basically be maintaining a position that we funded out of the DODIA grant uh, presently and that with a DODIA grant ending that we would need to, to maintain that position at least one, if not two, um, for the district, and, and that one's duplicated a little bit in Dr. Ribble's IT request. Uh, ESOL, as our staff, as our ESL pop population grows, MTSS positions, you know, there's a number of personnel positions here uh, throughout this the list that, that you'll see as we kind of go through it. The next section, group five, is special education from Dr. Hauser, uh, school psychologists, uh, behavior technicians, special ed consulting teachers, Again, a number of, of personnel requests there. That section totals $872,000. Uh, Dr. Ribble's IT is group six, uh, additional IT funding. That is, is uh, to support the ongoing expansion of the one-to-one -one program. The instru instructional technician, that was the one that was duplicated kind of from the, uh, the teaching and learning one that would be the same position. So that's when we, we can kind of factor out um, IT total was 260000 Then we get into the biggest one came from Dr. Shivers and the elementary administrators. Um, they had a number of requests totaling $3.44 million all in, all in all, but a number of different things, academic coaches, social workers, uh, full-time special instructors to try and eliminate some of the traveling, a number of things um, to deal with MTSS, Tier three reading and those kind of things as well, kind of on their wish list. But but that list is uh, pretty extensive. Um, Mr. Hoyt had a group of things from the high school um, that uh, I know he would he would advocate and say a lot of those would be fillbacks from the BAC cuts several years ago. The high school probably took the deepest cuts when we went through that process back in when was it thirteen? Since a long time ago now. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I'm with you on that. But the high school recommendations total 445000 uh, Included one item in there for equipment supplies for the van. That would be for... Uh, tubas. Tubas, yes, for tubas <laughs> for the marching band. And that one probably uh, we can look at maybe is that being a capital outlay request or some, maybe something different down the road as well. It may not have to be in a general fund type of request. And then some of the supplemental... Positions came from our athletic directors, and again, the main one there would be uh, the second one, the middle school coaching positions, uh, to fill back some of the cuts that came in coaching positions in the BAC. We're still having to cut quite a few kids at the middle schools uh, because of, of the reductions in the coaching assignments, and so the, the request was to try and maybe backfill some of those uh, and eliminate some of the cuts that are having to t take place at present time. And so if you look at, and then the last section there is kind of one, we, it's again, a working document is an estimate for what a 1% salary increase would be for each of the employee groups. You put the three together and it's a little less than $500,000 for a 1% increase for um, all employees within the employee group. So the total of groups one through nine, that's without that last salary section is just over 7 million. If you add in the 1%, then you're at almost 7.56. So. Again, the wish list is long, much much longer than what 2.9 million is going to fund, and so we'll have to uh, to make some priority choices and, and start to whittle that down for you in, in the months ahead. Uh, Lou, is there any way to highlight or do something about? You know, we had what was it, two million dollars in cuts? Was that been five years ago? It was a million ago? dollars that we ended up doing. Okay. At that is, time, is there any way to highlight or show? Any of those cuts that would be these bringing them back, basically? Um, I've got the coaching positions listed. I, I think we could do some of that. Yes, we could. Because I think there's social workers maybe or something else. or I'm We may sure. have kept those, but I can't remember. Yeah. Right. It's been a few days ago. I, I'd have to go back and look at our final list, and but I, I could look at that and try and do some color coding or something as we work on it because 
obviously there's going to be some of those as we make choices going forward. That's right. like our majority of them. We're not that way. Okay. Are not are not backfilling. Okay. Probably the primary ones that are baffling that I know is Mr. Hoyt's positions mm -hmm. and then the coaching positions, the mm -hmm. two that I cited. Okay. So I think Petrino is first and then Dave and then Kurt and then Leah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Daryl that that would be insightful to know what was cut and then what's coming back up. And uh, then I'd like to know what's, how are you going to approach the prioritization criteria? Because I would assume that there should be some different um, ways to categorize that as well as who prioritizes those. Well, one of the things, obviously the column, I, maybe I didn't point out, there's a column, what, third from the right is a priority level that we had the people who submitted them uh, prioritize, and we even went back to them oh, on right. multiple okay. occasions, and because sometimes the first round, everything was submitted as a priority one. Yes. <laughs> and so we went back to them and said, no, 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 you've got to rank order these. That's not exactly what I mean. Okay. I think for the prioritization criteria, Everybody has to have a common definition of what a priority one, two, three would be. And I think that if we had different factors for what those, those criteria were, you, we could probably weight them differently. So that's what I'm, I'm thinking of if, if we have approached it that way. And then also who gets to vote or have input into uh, what those prioritization criteria would be and, um, and then what we would rank those as. It seems like we'd need a little bit more input. Okay. Besides just the person asking for it. The way we presented it to them to start was that, you know, priority one was a need, priority two was a want, and a priority three is, is kind of dream. the dream <laughs> or, or down the road. But, but uh, like I said, Eric and I have discussed this, and most of what we got, there was a lot of ones in the list, so we backtracked in and, and asked them to do, uh, Dr. Hauser did, Greg did, um, Lacey did in teaching and learning to, and Lucas did with the elementary and, and the elementary principals asked them to do a, a re-rank order. So then now it will be a matter of, of discussions amongst um, district leadership to try and begin to, to uh, do some prioritization and rank ordering. And, and part of those requests is a justification for, mm -hmm. for the position that they, they need to make their case strongly to us I mean for for us to understand exactly what they're asking for along the way and we we go back to them multiple times what what does that mean what is there another way we can do this so we we've got a pretty vetted process it's not it's not any I would I, I look out on them I don't feel like it's easy the position I put them in <laughs> when when we have those conversations coming back through um, but as far as looking at the departments we like the people running the departments to make the decisions within their departments. And I think that's very important for us, but I think their struggle is they weigh because it's, it's personal to them and it's their people um, they're in with. So we, we try not to make this a top down thing. We'll, we'll make it a group thing amongst the upper administration as far as what recommendations we come out with. And as far as what a target line we're looking at, like, if you think about the BAC in reverse, mm -hmm. you were looking for a number to mm -hmm. get to, mm -hmm. to reduce. Now we're going to be looking at a number to get to, to move forward. And it's, I don't know if it's any easier of a process. <laughs> going I, yeah, I think forward. it is. I think it's a whole lot easier to say no to requested additions than to say we have to take away yeah. from existing programs and services. That's it's yeah. just a whole nother stress level. It, it's just a little hope, though. You you give them and a little. And, and it's hard. <laughs> it's not seven million worth, but and, and a little. We're not used to this. No. You know, this this isn't how I grew up as a superintendent. <laughs> um, that that's not a, my my. My knowledge is all moving in the other direction, but we follow the same process going back forward. And yeah, it's, it's still tough because I think there's so many areas. I, and one of the reasons why I, Lou and I talked about, should we give you guys the whole list? I think you need to see yeah, what people I are I asking for along, yeah. along the way. Mm -hmm. And we're looking for other solutions within that. I, th I think we found some other things that we can do along the way I think we're being just as creative now as we were before. I think we're trying to piece things together now ever bit as much. So even if we were going forward, you know, 2.9 million 
it, it is a lot of money. I'm not going to count that whatsoever. It's still going to be lean. It, it's mm -hmm. still going to be lean moving forward, no matter what decisions we make. And that's not all bad. And one thing with the BAC that I'll give them the credit for, because I, I think when you show that you'll see, and not a lot of those things were cut in the BAC. We got leaner. We got leaner and we did without some things and maybe we were okay doing some of that. Not easy, not easy whatsoever, but. And I'd add that, and now that there is more money available, we want to be very careful about where we add, knowing that, that we still have to be cost of, of efficient and effective and everything else with those dollars and, and can't just go out and feel like, oh gosh, all of a sudden now we got all kinds of money because we know we don't. And I also uh, try to keep our facilities planning in mind as well, that potentially opening a new building. Now you don't get um, new facilities yeah. waiting. Mm -hmm. Districts used to get new facilities waiting to help ease the districts into the operational costs that come with opening, you know, tens of thousands of square feet and staffing and being able to cover those things. You don't get that anymore. So we have to make it ourselves. And the only way for us to make it ourselves is to financially plan to do that. Worst thing you can ever possibly do is build a building and sorry, we can't afford to open the doors. <laughs> we got a nice building, but we can't open it. Or we're going to open that building and close that building because we can't afford to do that. So we've got to stack the deck in our favor moving forward to be able to complete the plans we want to complete as well. So we have to go forward with that in mind too. Dave, I think you were next. Excuse me. Blush. Blush. A couple things. Um, on the inflation front, um, March was 2%, and that's the target that the Fed is setting for what they think is an appropriate um, inflation rate. And so we're, we're at 1% here, if I read this correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, just a note of <laughs> caution. But, but related to that, the things that we buy, you know, that's that's the consumer price index. And the mm -hmm. things that we buy go up a lot faster than the consumer price index. And I just found this wonderful graph yesterday that I'll share with you, Lou, and you can decide if it's appropriate to share with the rest of the board. But it looks at health care costs and it looks at a num the things that a school district buys have gone up much higher rates than the charts over the last 20 years, much higher rates than the rate of inflation and things like TVs and clothing and things like that that we don't buy hardly any of have gone up much less than the rate of inflation. But the right. consumer price index looks at all that stuff. And so, you know, there's also the producer price index out there and some others. Um, so that's just a macroeconomic thing. Then the other piece, I assume this was all put together before we had had the what came out of Topeka and I look at, you know, special ed and, and the dollars that are being allocated there in their budget requests here. And that strikes me as sort of a, they're on their own to a certain extent. It seems like to me that the 700,000 roughly we're getting from the state for special ed has got to go into special ed. Well, something you got to keep in mind with that though, Dave, we've already been supplementing a million five right. into special ed over the years as well because they haven't been meeting that percentage. So I wouldn't say it'd be a one-to-one. -one. It, it's part of the discussion. Definitely we need to move forward in special education, but how much we supplement that is an important discussion to have because that's been something that's been choking our right. general fund, supplemental general too. Well, I guess another way of saying it, we look at it's easy to look at 2.9 and say that's what we've got, but it's mm -hmm. it's not because that 700 is not <laughs> going to go towards anything on this list other than some of the special ed requests, essentially. So um, I think it's all I've got for now. Kurt, I think you're next. Well, I, I don't know if this is really even the time to bring this up, but I find that most of this is all is personnel, looks like, or staff. Um, got a few things there, like you know, for the the tubas for the for the marching band. I mean, it, that should. I mean, that seems like that should be more like a, a capital outlay mm -hmm. item. And I think there. I mean, I, in fact, I think about five years ago, the 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 average age of our instruments is like twenty five years old, and now they're thirty. Um, I know we haven't replaced 
banishments for a long time. That always gets put off. And that's our biggest uh, extracurricular program we have in our district. And we have, I mean, we have 200 and like 25 kids in our band this year. And uh, we only have 100 and 100 and 200 uniforms. Remember when Nancy Knopp did that for the uniforms? And so we're, we're short like, you know, 50 uniforms and that's like, you know, they're 200 bucks a pop, I think. And, and we're looking at 10,000 there. And so I, I mean, I, I, and now it's probably not the time to talk about it. I want to make sure we don't forget about our band and that big, one of the biggest programs we have for, for, uh, that co-curricular in the, in the district. We did add, it's been, I think three years now. There was a line that was added in capital outlay that was for uh, music instruments and has been in place. And I think it's 20,000 a year that's been added to that line that was added several years back. So they've had that to do some of that. Now, is that sufficient to do all their, meet all their needs? Probably not, but that didn't exist before. So that was something that, that we added, uh, I think, in Dr. Shannon's last year. Well, and we've carried forward. Well, my son played tuba at Manhattan High School and in a K-State marching band, and they're $8,000 each. So $20,000 does not go very far mm -hmm. for instruments. And I know we have Glenn's down here that does a good job. I, mean, I think, he, I think he, they help us out quite a bit with pricing. But anyway, I just want to get that bug out there. Yeah, I have a motion to approve this entire list. No. Um, <laughs> oh. I vote yes. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say that I'm happy to see the uh, the addition of uh, the communications specialist position on top of my support for, you know, really all of these personnel positions that, you know, we could potentially add for $7 million. I think that is something that we need to look seriously at as we move into the bond issue because I think, you know, that's going to be an additional workload that we probably will need some help on. So I just wanted to say that I appreciated seeing that on there. I'm gonna move all the way back to Katrina's first question and the prioritization. And just simply a question to clarify how I'm reading that. When you have the priority levels, and I think this hits on that common language, that some of these are numbered one through whatever it looks like they're put in numerical order this is our top priority this is our last priority some it looks like are numbered these are ones because they're needs these are twos because they're wants um so my my question or my request to make that is that to me we need to have a, a similar measurement scale whether it's that each department numbers them one to whatever or or however that works and then that brings my question or I want to clarify I guess like I noticed in um, the special ed like there's um, school psych school psychologists are listed mm -hmm. twice three times mm -hmm. um, so is that because those are different for different schools, different different sorts of school psychologists, like one would be more testing driven and one would be more. No, the, the way I asked her to do that is the, the original one was for five and a half school psychs. And so that was one of the top things on their list. And when you're looking at it at a rank order, we've got to break that down a little more. What What's the priority you want? Yeah, do you want one psych, social worker, sped teacher, second psych and had them break it out in that capacity to break it down a little lower just because when you're looking at some of those positions when they grouped them all together in one the chunks were so big that you know and it, we, we would have made it through the process because we, we would have sat down with them and said okay is this what you want to do school psychs and nothing else whatsoever whoa 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 we probably don't want to do that we want to do some different things within there so but yeah, I, I think we can, and most of them run that way. Um, those that, that aren't just a straight rank order, we can easily have the personnel in those departments do that. And, and when, this is a, this is a, a living, breathing document. It already go, it'll go through many, uh, iterations, if you will, like the BAC, BAC did way back in the day. For those of us who were a part of that, it, it, it will, uh, it will change as, as we, 
we move along. A new school, 250, 300,000 for their salaries? I think at one, I've got it in a file. We ca I calculated it a while back, and I think it was total operations, and, and I've had to pull it and, and bring it back to be exact, but I, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of estimating the cost, and we used Marlette as kind of a sample comparison school. I think it was, uh, I want to say, 450. And that was that was salaries, benefits, and operations. You know, not not the facility itself, but for what would be your first year cost for personnel. I think it's more than that. I'll, I'll I'll bring that back the next meeting. Don't quote me on that, please, Dylan. Let me <laughs> let me let me look at that, and I'll bring bring that figure back to you the next time. I mean, it's just something else we need to keep in mind as we're going forward. Right. All yes. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an additional. Whenever we get to that point, an additional amount that we're going to have to have and be able to <clears throat> sustain going forward. So Leah, you need to up your motion to eight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to balance that, but it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. Okay. Any other uh, questions at this point? We will have lots more mm -hmm. yes. going forward. Yes. I don't want to make <laughs> no. Okay. All right, and thank you. Thanks, Lee. Uh, the next, I believe we need to go to an executive session first. Mr. President, I move that we go into executive session for five minutes to discuss individual employee performance pursuant to the exception for non-elected personnel exception under Kansas Open Meetings Act and that we return to open session in this room at 8.25 p.m. Dr. Wade, Eric Reed, and Andy Turner will join the board in executive session. Who's going to second? We're good. Second by Kurt. Do you have a break in there? Nope. No break. We got a couple of these, so we'll get this done. So. There's more. So, uh, all those <laughs> in favor, right hand. Motion passes 6 6. Yeah. I'll give you a break, Ash.
Here's a plain Jane, so who wants to? I move to approve resolution 1718-11 and resolution 1718-12. The notice of, not, of intent to non-renew teacher contracts for 2018-19 as listed. I move to give final approval to extend current administrator contacts as presented for one year or as otherwise noted with appreciation for the leadership in the district. Second by Carla. Motion by Kurt. Questions or comment by the board? By the audience? All those in favor, right hand. Motion passes 6-0. Uh, okay, well we change the next part of this. Let's go into the exec session for acquisition of real property. We'll talk about meetings later. Uh, oh, okay. The 13.3 executive session. Ready for a motion? Ready for the motion. Mr. President, I move that we go into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss potential properties for school facilities pursuant to the exception for preliminary discussion of the acquisition of real property under Kansas Open Meetings Act and that we return to open session in this room after, five after an additional five minute break. So that would put us back here at 10, 8.46 Six. p.m. Dr. Wade and Eric Reed will join the board in executive session. And Kurt seconds. All those in favor, right hand. Motion passes 6-0.